I'm standing in the Garden of Gethsemane. Behind me are olive trees. Those trees, they say, perhaps are as much as 2,000 years old. Perhaps a few of them date even to the time of Christ, maybe just as a sapling in his day. The word Gethsemane actually means pressing. It conveys the idea of pressing olives to produce olive oil, which was so necessary for the economy in this part of the world. When Jesus came here, the Bible says he was in agony. He came here with his disciples and prayed. In fact, the Gospels tell us that he contemplated what was ahead of him and invited them to pray with him. Jesus said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. And he said to his disciples, stay here and keep watch. He invited them to pray and they went to sleep. But he kept praying, contemplating what was ahead in agony as he would face the cross. Only a few minutes earlier, Jesus had shared with his disciples the last meal he would eat with them before he was crucified. That location is across the Kidron Valley behind us and then up the hillside to a place called the Upper Room. Jesus there shared with his disciples a final meal. And as they were eating, the Bible says, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks and offered it to them and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. So Jesus took those elements out of the meal, the bread and the cup, and reminded them of what he was going to experience in just a few moments. You know, as Jesus looked ahead to his death, he was anticipating what he alone could accomplish. The Bible says that for generations, the Jewish people had offered sacrifices because of the necessity of God's requirement for their sin to be forgiven. They offered sacrifices first in the tabernacle and then in the temple. If you come to the Holy Land, you might visit the tabernacle. That's a replica of what the Israelites experienced. It's located down in the desert. And there you'll see a brazen altar and a bronze laver. And you'd even have the opportunity to walk into a replica of the holy place where there's the table of showbread and the golden menorah. And even see a replica of the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant was located. There on the Ark of the Covenant is the mercy seat. It represents the mercy that God would demonstrate to you and me. Instead of pouring out his justice on all of us, the Father, before the foundation of the world, planned to pour out his justice on the Son. Jesus knew that as he prayed here in the garden. He agonized over what was ahead. And he knew that shortly he would utter those words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? As he hung on the cross, he experienced not only the physical agony of a Roman crucifixion, he experienced something far greater, the spiritual agony of separation from the Father. For the first time in all of human history, the Son and the Father were separated. And you know why? Because he loves us. Because he wants us to know him. You see, the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. All of those animal sacrifices down through the generations looked forward to that one sacrifice that Jesus would offer for sin forever through his death on the cross. It's true. Jesus shed real blood on a real Roman cross in a real city called Jerusalem so that you and I could experience the real forgiveness that only God could offer us for 
our real sin. And so that we could experience a real relationship with a real God in heaven. All of that is possible because of the death of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So when you partake of the bread and the cup, remember, he did it all for you.